Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching Our History. Today we're going over the life of King Lobengula, who was the last recognized king of the northern Debele. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like and if you're new here, consider smashing the subscribe button. If this isn't your first rodeo and you haven't shown some love to the subscribe, now is your opportunity. Thank you for watching. Lobengula Lobengula Kumalo, born around 1845, held a, held a significant position of being the last recognized king of the northern Ndebele, also known as the Matabele in English. The Ndebele people are renowned for their military prowess and are often referred to as the men of the long shields in their native language. This epithet derived from the expert use of the Nguni shield during warfare. Lobengula's reign marked a crucial era in the history of the northern Ndebele as he faced numerous challenges from colonial powers particularly the British South Africa Company. Despite his efforts to navigate this volatile landscape, Lobengula tragically passed away around 1894, bringing to an end the official monarchy of the Ndebele people. Background the Matabele were a group of people who originated from a faction of the Zulu people. They migrated northward during the time of Shaka's reign, which is characterized by the violent upheavals known as the Mfetkane and Divitkane, led by their general Mzilikazi. The Matabele left the Zulu territory and settled in what is now known as Matabele land in western Zimbabwe during the late 1830s. However, their influence extended beyond this region as they claimed sovereignty over a larger area. This migration and subsequent settlement played a significant role in shaping the demographic and political landscape of the region. The Ndebele tribe held a privileged position within their society, which gave them certain advantages over outsiders. However, in order to maintain these privileges, both men and women of the Ndebele had to adhere to strict sets of rules and social responsibilities as dictated by their hierarchy structure. Any infringement of these responsibilities was met with severe punishment, often resulting in death unless the king decided to grant a rare reprieve. This level of discipline and loyalty was crucial to the Ndebele's success in exerting their dominance over neighboring tribes. By strictly enforcing social order and maintaining a strong sense of unity, the Ndebele were able to control and influence their surrounding communities. Birthright after the passing of Mzilikazi, the initial ruler of the Ndebele nation, in 1868, a succession dispute arose among the Izinduna, or chiefs. One of Mzilikazi's sons from a lesser ranking wife, Lobengula, was offered the crown. However, his ascent was challenged by Chief Mbiko Masuko who led several impis or regiments against Lobengula's claim. The matter was ultimately settled through a confrontation known as the Arbitration of the Asagai, where Lobengula and his impis successfully defeated the rebels. Lobengula's remarkable bravery and triumph in this battle solidified his position as the undisputed choice for the throne, earning him the unanimous support of the chiefs. Coronation the coronation of Lobengula took place at Mshatlandlela, a significant military town. The Ndebele nation gathered in a vast semicircle formation, engaging in a powerful war dance as a symbol of their loyalty and dedication to Lobengula. This display showcased their readiness to fight and even sacrifice their lives for him. As a part of the coronation rituals, a substantial number of cattle were slaughtered and the finest cuts of meat were offered to Mlimo, the spiritual leader of the Ndebele, as well as the deceased Mzilikazi, Lobengula's predecessor. Additionally, copious amounts of millet beer were consumed during the celebration. During the crowning of Lobengula, approximately 10,000 Matabele warriors were present, showcasing their distinct and elaborate war costumes. These costumes included a headdress and a short cape made of black ostrich feathers, a kilt made of leopard or other skins adorned with white cattle tails, and metal rings around their ankles. Their weaponry consisted of long spears for throwing and short stabbing spears known as assegais, which were the principal weapon of the Zulu people. The warriors also carried large oval shields made of oxide, displaying various colors based on their regiment. The Ndebele army, housing around 15,000 men in 40 regiments, maintained their dominance through their larger size and strict discipline. Their central base was located in Lovengula's capital of Bluwayo. 
rule. In 1870, Lobengula granted the London and Limpopo Mining Company, led by Sir John Swinburne, the rights to explore for gold and other minerals in a specific area. This area was located in the extreme southwest of Matabila, along the Tati River, between the Sashe and Ramakobane rivers. This grant became known as the Tati Concession. However, it took nearly two decades before any significant mining activities took place in this region. It was around 1890 that substantial mining operations began in the Tati concession. These operations would go on to play a significant role in the region's economic development. Lobengula had initially shown tolerance towards white hunters in his territory and even punished his tribe members who posed a threat to them. However, his attitude changed when a British team consisting of Francis Thompson, Charles Rudd and Rockford Maguire approached him in 1888. They sought permission to mine minerals in additional parts of his land. Lobengula was skeptical about engaging in negotiations, but his friend Leander Starr Jamison, who had treated him for gout in the past, proposed a deal. This this agreement included securing funds and weapons for the Matabele, as well as ensuring that any diggers would be considered as subjects of Lobengula's kingdom. Additionally, the agreement prohibited the Bush and the Portuguese from settling or acquiring concessions in Matabele land. Lobengula was illiterate and unaware of the detrimental nature of the contract he signed, which later had severe consequences for his country. It was only when his subjects discovered the true terms of the agreement that Lobengula became aware of the situation. Situation. Seeking confirmation, he turned to friendly English missionaries who verified the rumors. In an attempt to protest, Lobengula sent two emissaries to Queen Victoria of Britain, but they faced obstruction from Alfred Bight's associates at the port, causing their efforts to be in vain. Finally, on the 23rd of April 1889, Lobengula officially protested the contract to Queen Victoria, only to be informed by her advisor that excluding white men was deemed impossible. Despite feeling tricked, Lobengula and his Indunas acknowledged the contract's validity. This led to a signing of the 25-year Rad concession on the 30th of October 1888, Matabele War. The first Matabele War commenced in October 1893 and resulted in significant losses for the Ndebele warriors due to the superior military strength of the British South Africa Company. One notable event was that the Battle of Shangani. In December 1893, reports emerged of Lobengula falling severely ill. However, his death in early 1894 was kept secret for several months and the exact cause of his demise remains uncertain. By October 1897, white colonists had successfully established settlements across a significant portion of the territory later known as Rhodesia. Personal life. Lobengula had well over 20 wives possibly many more, among them Kualile, daughter of King Mzila of the Gaza Empire, and Lozi Keyi. If you made it this far, I hope you're really enjoying this channel. And if you'd like to support the creation of more content like this, because all contributions are greatly appreciated, consider joining the channel in the membership tab or check out the Patreon link in the description below. 